Thanks, Ted. Joining me now, okay, uh, Sheriff Sheriff David Clark. Sheriff, thanks for being with us. John, what a way to wake up for heaven's sake. <laughs> I listened to that conversation. That was that was pretty good. Talking about bending it over, jamming it up, and all that stuff. I said, "Man, what did I walk into here?" <laughs> I really hate this bill. Um, you know, you sent me a text the other day that was uh, that was pretty interesting. Uh, I, I just want you to elaborate on that a little bit where you were you were you know kind of kind of going off on some uh, stuff just this this whole women's transgender in male sports you know we had a guy uh, Adrian called in earlier one of our callers and he had an interesting he had an interesting thing I, I want to get your take take on it for very, uh, that's why I got the best Trump always says I got the best callers in America and he says um what if when that swimmer Leah whatever his name is went to swim and both teams both sides refused to get in the pool would that have ended this whole thing in one day interesting what do you think not in one not in one day but i think it would have uh started a, a stampede but it started a movement let's put it that way uh, this whole this whole argument is ridiculous the the you know just the, the premise of the notion of uh women competing against men when you know, we all understand <clears throat> that swimming that you're talking about is setting records for heaven's sakes. Um, volleyball players, one of the, the transgender males spiked a, um, a volleyball and hit a girl in the face and seriously injured her. It's just, it's gross. And, and you know, one of the things, it's interesting, uh, you know, how come we don't see transgender males getting in on the uh, women, you you know, ultimate fighters of the U, UCF, uh, uh, you know, or the w, um, WWE, the women's portion of it, because that's coming next. But I think that the only way this is really going to end is for just a group of males to get involved and go and try out for, let's say, the women's basketball team or whatever, the women's um softball team and then take the whole damn thing over and then you'll crush title is it title nine or yes. title seven one of them nine title nine and and then that would end this crap when there's no spots at all for women to play sports that's not what i'm uh what i stand for but this thing that's the only way this thing is going to be stopped no legislation is going to do it courts are starting to side with i saw that um I think it was the United States Supreme Court just the other day. Um, some state has a ban on on women playing, I'm sorry, men playing women's sports, and, and the Supreme Court shot it down. So, you know, the only way this is going to end is you totally eliminate women from sports by having men take over all the women's sports, and then I think some sanity will come back, and then we can go back to letting women compete against women, the men compete against men, like it's always been. Sheriff David Clark with us. Um, Sheriff Clark, got a couple more minutes here. You sent a text to, uh, we have this little text link called the Spin Zone, <laughs> which is Sheriff Clark, Nate Perry, who, and uh, who's on Godzilla Win Senior Editor, myself, Jack, uh, my son. And uh, I actually read what you sent. That's like one of the first texts I read. It was very interesting. You sent a screenshot and you highlighted some stuff that had to do with the Colorado Buffaloes and Deion Sanders. I'm a big Deion fan. I loved him when he played at Florida State primetime. I loved him when he played for Dallas and Atlanta. I thought he was extraordinary. I remember watching him playing at Atlanta baseball uh, for the Braves uh, while he was playing football. He's a fascinating guy. And I like the job he's done at Colorado. But, uh, but he's got a son there who's not attending classes and he's plays football and that's the that's the quarterback and you were you were pretty hot about this can you can you elaborate on why you were so um fired up about uh Deion Sanders son and what was going on in the color in uh, University of Colorado sir sure and I like Deion Sanders too I'm a big De Deion Sanders fan Obviously, especially when he played with the Cowboys and they, they won a right. Super Bowl. But that being said, uh, I think he's a he's a great motivator 
I think he's a, a great leader of young men, you know, by with his coaching skills uh, and what he stands on, so on and so forth. But, you know, he's making a mockery of, of the, the term student athlete. He's making a mockery of <clears throat> college football. I've always been against the professional leagues, whether it be um, basketball or football, using college as a, as a farm system. Create your own damn farm system, for heaven's sake. And allow kids who really want an education to attend universities. You know, universities can only let so many students in. They only have so much room. And so when a guy like his son, Shadur, is taking up a seat in classrooms, and he's not there to, to study, and he's not there to learn, and he's not there to attend classes. He's taking away a seat from some kid who applied to the University of Colorado who didn't get in because they just didn't have enough room. That's the problem I have with it. Let's stop the charade. Shame on the University of Colorado uh, for whoring themselves to try to get some attention on their college football program instead of doing it in a more honorable way by allowing themselves to be used, um, you, you know, by by Deion Sanders and being used by his son. The, the article said that he went to a chemistry class. The first lecture he's attended, he's been in, enrolled at the university for over a year. This is the first lecture that he's attended. Now, he takes some online classes, but there's some doubt that he even logs in. So the whole thing's a scam. But anyway, he comes to the com computer lecture. He doesn't have a laptop. He's got no notepad. He's got no writing um, instrument. He's just there to do a photo op. So he does a YouTube spot of him attending class at the University of Colorado when the whole damn thing was a joke. Also, there's been a report from some of the college professors there that these, these uh, football players who are, who are attending some of the classes are coming. They're very disrespectful to what's going on inside the classroom. And they complained to, to Dion about it. Dion was upset, and he should have been. And he said he's going to demand uh, better from his students. I doubt that that'll change because it's all about the money that they can make from being a top-flight football program. I, I love college football. Everybody knows that. But for heaven's sakes, let's just stop with the charade. That's all I'm asking. Let's stop with the charade about the student-athlete and that these people are, these athletes are coming to get an education and they just happen to be playing sports. No, they're not. They're using that system. Let's let the university be for students who want to learn, and then we'll find some other way uh, for these athletes to hone their skills until they can get into the, the NFL or the NBA or Major League Baseball. You know, Sheriff, um, I agree with you 100%, and uh, I like Dion also. Uh, but he's a father, and his son is the quarterback. And, you know, you got to lead by example, right? So, uh, you know, the, the fact that his son, you know, it's, it's one thing not to go to classes and maybe try to, you know, do it online or keep it under the radar screen, but to mock basically what his son did the quarterback is he just mocked the system and, you know, went to class and put it up on YouTube so he could make money off it. And he just, he just mocked the whole thing. And what is that? I mean, what message does that send to young people? Like, you have a responsibility to attend class and be a student athlete. I mean, um, you know, my son plays baseball for West Virginia. I mean, he's got classes. I mean, he's got to go. He does, you know, some of them online. Some of them are brick and mortar. But, I mean, he's got to pass tests. And, you know, we expect him to get A's or B's, A's and B's. And, you know, he's got – was, he was on the honor roll this semester – and uh, whenever we're talking to him and he's not a baseball practice, he's studying as he should be. I mean, that's the way it's supposed to be. Remember the movie Coach Carter where, you know, kids were failing and so he locked the basketball team out and then, you know, the Board of Education fired him. <laughs> Remember that? Right. Then, they, then yeah. they brought him back because it was the students who said, you know what, he's right. And uh, whether they fired him or not. We're not going to play until we get our grades up. Remember that? Remember that movie? It's a classic movie. I mean, that's what we have to get back to. But, you know, and as I the love Dion, I love Dion, but letting his son get away with this, what's the example? Yeah, the only, way, the only way it, it's going to happen, though, is for students who don't get admitted to their, their number one university, the one they really want to get into, and it's not because they don't have the GPA or the, uh, the, the SAT scores. 
but it's because the schools just don't have any room to file a class action lawsuit uh, for the state schools, the government ones, for being denied um, admission on the basis of it, and some lawyer can fill in the blanks because, uh, you know, there were coaches in the past, Bob Knight, the late Bob Knight from Indiana University, Coach Krzyzewski at Duke, and there's others who had a strict rule that if you didn't go to uh, class, you didn't get to play. And, and, and I know with, with Bob Knight, he gave the professors his personal number and said, I want to know when my players are not attending class. And so he gave them a direct route in order to be able to, to communicate quickly that the, the kid's not going to school or that he's failing. And so the students, you know, the players anyway, they understood, hey, I'm going to have to go to class. I got to keep my GPA up and I got to take this class thing seriously or I'm not going to get to play. Well, that doesn't that doesn't hold anymore for most of these coaches. You know, it's all about the NIL. It's all about uh, these coaches keeping their jobs by by um, having a winning program, you know, the alumni. The boosters, the donors get upset when their teams aren't winning. And that, so it's become big business. And I understand that. I'm not saying we need to go to a mom pop operation. But what I am saying is let's stop the charade. Let's stop the theater and just make it clear. We'll figure out some system where they can, you know, attend, uh, you know, compete for a college team, you know, the football, baseball, the basketball team, or whatever sport, and that it's separate from, you know, we're not going to fake this thing and, and like, tell these guys they got to go to class and they're not going and we'll just kind of look the other way. It, it just makes a mockery of the whole damn system, John. You know, Sheriff Clark, you're so right. Uh, we got NBA Plus playoffs Plus he's on scholarship. He's on no, scholarship, right. so that's taxpayer money. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it's just, and, and I think I think because it's Dion, I think that's why. Like, if this was like another university, I mean, I wouldn't have even picked up on it. But, you know, because it's Dion, and like you and I, I mean, I like Dion, and I love what he's done there, and I love the motivation, and I love the fact that he goes out and he's got this you. This is WJFN, Goochland, Bonaire, Chester, and WJFV, Portsmouth.